The last few weeks we have been reading what I would consider disturbing words from the Sermon on the Mount. The words themselves are disturbing, but it also kind of unsettling, maybe you sense that, that Jesus himself said such stern words. We like to think that it's Moses and the prophets and all that whole Old Testament stuff, you know, that's got all those harshness to it, all the wrath and anger of God type stuff. But here in the Sermon on the Mount, it's our dear Lord Jesus who utters some very strong, harsh words. We're on the Sermon on the Mount, and unfortunately, the way our lectionary series works, it breaks it up over a period of weeks. So I got to go back a week or so and, and give you some of the harsh words, you know. Jesus is talking about righteousness. Now, I don't use the word righteousness very often in my everyday lang language. Do you? No, no. no. But we do use the word right. And for many of us, we think, if I can just get certain things right in my life, then I'll be free. If I get the right grades, if I get into the right college, if I get the right job, if I get the right spouse, if I live in the right place, then I'll be free and I will enjoy life. We use it that sense, you know. But to get right with God, we hear these very uncomfortable words. It was uncomfortable to the crowd, to the Pharisees, to the disciples, and to you and me. In fact, a week or so ago, Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of Pharisees and the scribes, you won't get into heaven. Now, who are these Pharisees? Who are these scribes? They took God's Ten Commandments, and they were regular folk. They're regular pew-sitting folk. They're not clergy people. They're regular folk. And they were zealous for the Ten Commandments. They had seen how God had punished them in the Old Testament many times because of their unfaithfulness. And so they were zealous. Never again will God punish us. We're going to make sure that we as a nation never anger God so much that he lets another nation oppress or enslave us. And so they took the... Do you all remember the Ten Commandments? Many of you are Lutherans, right? I can call upon any of you Lutherans and I can just <laughs> ask right now and you would just spit it out just perfectly, right? You know? And if you took a deep breath and thought about it for a moment, you'd probably give me the explanation, right? Ten Commandments. Are there some of us that don't quite remember all ten right now? Now imagine having lay leaders that come and say, we're going to help you by putting 610 or 13 more rules around those Ten Commandments. So if you don't break our man-made rules, you can't possibly break the commandment of God. I don't know about you, ten is pretty much the maximum I can remember, right? You know? Maybe you remember in, uh, was it, well, uh, one of those movies where Supposing Moses came down with three tablets, you know, and said, here's the 15, and oops, here's the 10 commandments, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine 600 rules that you have to know and keep and not break in order not to break the commandment and not to anger God? And Jesus says, unless you are more righteous than the Pharisees, you're not going to get into the kingdom of God. Everybody in the crowd had to gulp and say, well, we're doomed, you know? Meanwhile, the Pharisees are smirking, right? You know? Yeah. Now, they had been criticizing Jesus as being a lawbreaker. You know, he's doing all these miracles. And Jesus, no, 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 not a, not a I will not be crossed, a, a T cross, an I dotted, that will depart from God's law until all has been fulfilled by me. But don't think I've come to break the law, you know? And then he says, unless you're more righteous than the Pharisees, you're not going to get in. Everybody had a gulp. Pharisees smirked until Jesus said, you heard it of old, you shall not murder. I say, can't even be angry with somebody else. The Pharisees begin to gulp a little bit. 
I say, you heard it said of old, you should not commit adultery. I say, you shall not even look with lust upon another. Two Pharisees who walked by into town that day to hear Jesus walk past a, girl, a bunch of girls at the well and made some snide remarks, and they were gulping, you know? I wonder how crude we can be and not break that commandment, they thought to themselves. And if your brother has something against you, settle with him. Don't go to court. Two men in the audience were thinking about the dispute they had with a neighbor over land. And with that, Jesus levels the playing field, the play field right there, you know? All people are guilty. He enumerates several things. You heard it said, but I say. And they all dealt with the internal. Did you catch that? Just like the kids' sermon. It's not the outward anger, not outward murder that breaks the commandment. It's your inner attitude. It's happening inside you. And then finally, probably it's in next week's reading, he, after he lays this all out, he finally comes and, and gives you the punchline. Therefore be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. No one makes it. God help us. In fact, that's a good prayer. God help us. And the good news is that Jesus will comfort people who, who know that the plainy field has been leveled by the commandments. That you need a Savior. And how does Jesus enumerate that or say that in the Gospels? He says, come. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Learn of me. He invites you to come. It will be he who will fulfill all the law and all the prophets and all that God had promised when he dies on the cross. And now he gives it to you as a gift. Why do we need to hear this word in our day? Because sometimes we are much too concerned about the outward stuff. Are we not? Don't we say a good Christian is a Christian that does these certain things and doesn't do these things? Don't we, somewhere in deep in our hearts, you know, there's a guy that even wrote a prayer. Lord, please, stop talking about this grace and just show me what I must do, you know? Stop talking about free gifts and just show me what I must do to, to be in heaven forever. That's an honest prayer by many of us, you know? Because there's something inside of us that wants to lay a little credit. A little, I don't do this, do, so I, I don't do this, don't, so I'm in. Or I do do this, do, I'm in. And we kind of judge Christians, successful Christians, as those who on the outside have got it together. And the bad Christians are those maybe in the inner city. I don't know why we always blame the people in the inner city, but the inner city people, you know? The drugs, the violence, the immorality. I mean, there's got to be a better illustration than always blaming the inner city people, you know? All right, people in Washington, D.C., better illustration. <laughs> We're not as corrupt or immoral. We don't lie as much as those people. And so God must love us at least a little bit more than he loves them. I know today's Super Bowl Sunday, and um, my team's not in it. Uh, they've been in it too many times, according to some of you, by New England Patriots, you know. So you are delighted in the fact that they're not in. But... Um, What's interesting is when you go to a football game or a baseball game and you don't have a stake in it, it's entirely different. I went to a, a, you know, a wing bar back, back in Ohio and uh, it was the Cubs versus Cleveland in the World Series. My brother's Cubs fan, I have good friends that were Cleveland fans. I had no stake in this game. I'm watching this game, I'm enjoying this game and I'm being entertained by the re reactions of all the Cub fans when something that go their way, and all the Indian fans that don't, and my blood pressure is so level and everybody else is sky high, you know? <laughs> and I heard lots of words I, I can't use, you know? Um, <laughs> and I was so relaxed, you know? Years ago, there was a player for the Patriots. He also played, I think, for San Diego, Junior Say. I uh, played 20-some years of football, you know? He was on one of our championship teams. 
a few years ago, he killed himself uh, with a shotgun. And uh, tragic, you know? And um, I remember watching on ESPN, uh, Marcus Willie was being interviewed quite tearfully. Marcellus Willie was being interviewed most tearfully as he was lamenting that his, his dear teammate was dead, you know? And he said uh, uh, certain things about, about uh, his friend. He said, he never showed us, he never allowed us to see himself hurt. When we came in from a tough game, some of us would go off to the trainer. But Marcus, a junior always just went off by himself, back to his room. We never saw him hurt. And he was weeping. And then after he got composure again, he said, I like to think that maybe if we translate that into his life, that's the way he lived all his life. He wanted to be a role model. He wanted to be a, someone else's hero. He wanted to be a good example that other people could look up to. And when he couldn't do it, he left us. I know Christians like that. People that confess Christ, that left their spouse, because they just couldn't do it anymore. They just couldn't live up to the externals, you know? I know people who confess Christ and took their life because it just became unbearable to live up to those standards. When did the church become such a museum of saints? Are we not a hospital? for sinners? Aren't we supposed to be a place where we can be authentic? That's what's good about small groups. You're part of a small group. You can get real and tell, tell your story and let people know that you're hurt. But so often we don't do that because we've, we've got this spirit that says, no, we got to look good on the outside. My friends, Jesus, even if you don't, let others in on what's going on inside of you. Jesus sees it. And where it's sinful, he forgives. Where it's distressing, he comforts. He says, come to me all you who are weak and heavy labor. You know what happens when you allow yourself to be real? Allow Jesus to heal you? You become a forgiven healer. You can be part of the body of Christ that people will go to you and won't receive judgment from, but a word of forgiveness and grace. Is that your dream for this church? That we would be a healing place for hurt people? Or is it to be a museum of just good people that got it together on the outside? The Sermon on the Mount and the words of Jesus strike harshly at us but the words of Jesus come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest and forgiveness is what we bank on week after week. So try to be real with others, but be real with Jesus and say, Lord, I can't be what I think I got to be. I can't be right. So Lord, make me right with your Father through your cross. In Jesus' name. And may the peace of God surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ. Amen.